Uh, hello folks, welcome back to the second installment of this week's podcast and um, we're delighted to welcome a special guest. Now as we were talking off air, we generally um, only have in-house, whether it's a player or a manager, but given the week that's in it, um, we have a big match coming up this weekend, um, we thought we'd bring in <clears throat> not only a supporter, but uh, a past player as well. Uh, I know to look at him, you might not think that, but look, that's fair enough. Um, but with Brenton Curtis for more on points, so big welcome. Brenton, thanks very much for coming on. Thank you, Gareth. But you said Christmas hasn't been kind, or what are you saying? Well, look, I can't say anything. I, I'm, I'm sitting in the house, but isolating, so I, you know what I mean? I, I no, no excuse for anything. But, look, obviously we're going to discuss the Irish Cup match uh, on Saturday. Um, it's a big game in terms of, you know, it's a local derby, um, it's bragging rights and all the rest of it. I mean, I suppose, firstly, we'll touch on, Nuri have obviously been going reasonably well in, in the championship at the moment, maybe a little blip sort of recently. One point, I mean, it's it's been a bit of a struggle this season. I mean, from from, from your point of view, you know, somebody that's obviously good at the matches week in, week out, how have things been going? I mean, in terms of results, they haven't been going well, but in terms of performances that you've seen, what, what's your sort of take on it? Yeah, I started sort of way back in August, played Balamina at home, and we ended up winning 2-1 that day. And what was that? Yeah, I thought, I thought a lot of people maybe get carried away that day. You know, yes, you start the season with three points, were excited. I just thought the performance wasn't great, and I knew the players that Balamina had let go and took in, you know, took in players from Carrick and stuff. So they weren't the Balamina of old. So we beat them 2 1. Yes, three points were off and running. Went to Carrick on a Tuesday night, lost 1 0, and it just kind of snowballed from there. Um, performance wise, we weren't really getting any performances there. I think following on from Carrick, and I haven't put six past us. So it was tough, tough days. Um, and Jesus, I continue for. Game week 12, game week 13. But you, you could see maybe game week 8 or 9 performance was starting to come back into it. You know, we were losing by the odd goal. You're getting back in the games, you're scoring goals. Big Alan Sullivan got back in, was leading the line, was causing trouble, was creating a few goals. So it's, <clears throat> I turned a bit. Um, we went to Carrick that day, 1 2 1. Luke Bates later got both goals. And then again, played Glenavon shortly after that at home, we lost. 2-1, I think. Again, just giving cheap goals away. Went to Windsor, drew one all. So it's been up and down. You know yourself. He's been in the league before. You know what it's like. Um, it's a mini league within the league, and you just try your best to keep battling and winning points in around us, you know? Look, that's something that you have experience on, though. Uh, was it a few seasons ago there was like 11 games where there was defeats, and then all yeah. of a sudden he's managed to turn that around yeah. and, and hang on in there? So, I mean, one point, have the experience of doing that. And I suppose you've got the players that can keep you in there. That's it, yeah. I think it was a very great team that time. It was Cliftonville and we scored two goals in injury time to beat them. Um, and that put us on a wee run. Um, players, yes, and now we're in the January, you know, we have two, two new lads in there, I think Dylan Hahn, Daniel McKenna, coming in from Athlone Town. It's going to take a few weeks to see what, what the boys are like and get them up to speed. But it's, I think our problems past couple of weeks, keeping 11 players in the pitch. Um, and taking our chances, you know. Tell, us about it. Sorry, uh, Tell me about it. Oh, it's funny, Stevie Moon sent off recently there. Yeah. Um, we went to Dungannon, Gavin Pierce was sent off. That was his second sent off in a matter of weeks. But the dugout uh, draw in the last minute, Alan Sullivan stuck one in the top corner. So there's glimmers of hope there. But you know yourself, look, you can lose in our 10 games and be six points off, but you win three or four games, all of a sudden you're back up the table again. So um, we know you guys are pushing hard to get up and we'll just be fighting as hard as we can to get off the bottom and even get off that hard position. We like to be just climbing higher and higher. I know Barry, you know Barry yourselves, he'll not be happy where he is. And January is just only beginning, so there'll be time to bring in a few more players, you know. Uh, in terms of, I mean, that uh, Dungallon result, um, and obviously then you had those matches called off over, yeah. o- over the festive period. Um, <laughs> I mean... Looking at the Dungannon result, getting that goal in the last minute, especially down to 10 men, I mean, cliche, but I mean, football's all about cliches. If that, if you don't get that goal, you know, you, that, that gap's extended then above you. That point could be could be crucial, not only for the in the context of the season, but in terms of the mentality and, and you know, from a psychological perspective, surely. Yeah, it was massive. You know, it was at the game. Dungannon scored um, early on. We equalised. They kind of nicked one again just to go in front. Gavin sent off, Colin DC wasn't playing nice, possibly could have got sent off. But I'm sure you've seen the goal, Gareth. Yeah. 
Um, injury time, Keelan Dillon picked the ball in the middle of the field, sends what a 40, 50 yard ball. And a, a boy who I know you're fond of, Stephen Ball, bounce bones, cut across it, Alan O'Sullivan doing what all good strikers do. You're right, we get down the road that night thinking we stole a point, and it was a big point at that. So Gannon left deflated. And, and from my own point of view, I was standing there thinking, because there is a bit of a difference in the league, there's nothing between us and the pitch, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So with the right acquisitions in January and 11 players in the pitch, I'm, well, I believe we can claw the leg of the end back and pour it down back. Sometimes it's just all down to who wants it more, maybe. And we were lacking that in previous games, and hopefully now they'll dig that out and no better place to dig it out than this Saturday, you know? Yeah, because... As you touched on, like, I mean, we're pushing and hoping for promotion. You guys yeah. are trying to hang on in there and stay in the Premiership. How important is this game for one point? I mean, we've discussed this, Gareth and myself, but is it of vital importance? I think right now both teams would prefer to have a league game and have three points, but the Cup game's here. So what's it like for you guys? Well, from our perspective, the league hasn't been pretty, so it's maybe a nice we uh, they'd step into the Cup with a decent role in the League Cup, albeit we lost in the semi-final that night away to Korean 6-1. It was cruel. Again, man sent off. But um, like from a fan perspective, I know you used to do the same. Players perspective, it's going to be a big crowd up the road. Um, an Irish Cup, God knows where you can go in the Irish Cup. Surely a couple of years ago, we lost the semi-final to Ballon Mallard. So mm -hmm. you can start in the point, you can end up anywhere. So no, I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure the players are. Um, just take one game at a time. Try, try and get past you guys and then get back to the league business, you know. Yourselves, I'm sure, as you, Gareth mentioned earlier, a wee blip, you just dropped points there. It was a Ballyclare, an yeah. institute. Yeah. You know, Ali, you said earlier on this season there's going to be a canter, wasn't it? There's going to be a walk in the park that league phase there. Remember you said <laughs> that? So, it's going to be, look, you have the squad to do it. It's early days. There's a long way to go, but I'm sure you just keep picking up points and trying out your wins. You'll be there. Happy enough. Yeah, Brendan. Oh, I, yeah. I'm, personally, I'm looking forward to. It. I think just from, like you said, it's a little break from the league. Not that we've had much to complain about in the league this season, because it has been it's been a joy to watch us sometimes. But yeah. we do have these frustrating performances in us, like Saturday, like Ballyclare. But the cup is always good, and playing more points is always good fun as well. Because yeah. you know, it, it's like a friendly rivalry. There's always that bit of crack. You know, most of the boys down there. So. I think, I think it's actually better as well that it's down at Milltown because the crowd will really pack the place out. Um, yeah. And, you know, I'm just, yeah, I'm looking forward, looking forward to it. I'm, I think it'll be a good game, hopefully. Um, but I think more importantly, and it's the, the role of these clubs is to, is to try to bring fans down and try to encourage them to come to local football. And this exactly. is a perfect example of that. You know, we stepped up in Ballyclare on the Monday when we had a chance in front of a big crowd. But if this is an electric game and it's end-to-end, -end, it convinces people to maybe, do you know what, local football is good enough. I might go down and yeah. start following one of these teams. So. Get off the backstage. No, I, I know people are ready to be saying, what time is it at? Oh, such and such is playing in the Premier League that day. Get off your horse and go to the game, you know. Yeah. The best 10 or 12 pounds you ever spend, get in and just seeing local football, how to scout the football, you know. Yeah. And in, in terms of just sort of touching on that, um, I mean, you know, I've been down at an awful lot of one yeah. point games over the last few years. And, you know, despite the bit of slagging and stuff, you know, we have a lot of friends down there and I want genuinely want to see one point doing well. Yeah. In, in terms of this type of game, so, I mean, if you take this game in isolation, <laughs> for uh, what, what, what a better term, <laughs> that wasn't, that wasn't, that wasn't, that wasn't intended, by the um, But if you're looking at it, so yeah, we're setting aside league action, you know, for different reasons might be a good thing. You can just sort of get stuck in, have a 90 minutes, kick each other off the park, do whatever you want to do, mm -hmm. you have a bit of battle. In terms of Warren Point as a club, you're a great club and really well run and so, so many good people about it. And this is not, don't want this to come across as a criticism, but for these types of games where you get a local derby, whereas like 10 years ago, we had boys from here, there and everywhere playing for Newry. And despite them saying they really cared about it, in hindsight, you know, it was clear they really didn't, you know. That's not to say in any way, shape, or form that the, the boys that were playing for Warren Point don't care about it. But yeah. can it can it mean as much to, you know, uh I don't want to throw names out there, but to but to quite a few of the, the point boys as much as it might mean to uh you know even a boiler who's played for both teams and Moner who's played exactly. for both teams, Darren, Darren King. You know, I mean what what do you think? Knowing the players probably better than I do. What's what's their mentality going into? Do they treat it as another game, or, they, or will Barry have them sort of 
you know, rail.com, local derby, local derby. Yeah, <clears throat> I'll have them pumped. And sure, if they're looking across the media stuff, They'll see it being pushed via the local papers and all online and stuff. So let me tell you, if they don't get it, they need to wake it up and get it quickly. Um, no, you imagine John Boyle, Moner, Engine, them by all played for the point. And as you said, when you have them local players playing, they obviously do care more and want it more. But when they'll come quarter to five on Saturday, well, these boys want it. But back in my time, I mind playing, we played welders at a cup game one time. I think there was. 10 more fight men and one Yuri man, and that Yuri man was Keith Johnson playing. And we bet well as Taiwan in the cup game, and they couldn't believe the amount of locals. You know, we don't have that now. And probably support ways, people aren't coming to watch because there's no local players playing. So that's a hindrance that way, also. But that's where you're hoping your academy and your, your youth players can get a chance to come up through the ranks and see. But look, I, I just hope I'll have them wind up. Marcus Woods is involved there. Marcus knows what it's like. Maybe yeah. them up. My brother will be starting the fans going clean berserk. <laughs> probably. Yeah. I like to think they'll all know from three o'clock on Saturday. As you said, Ali, as well, there'll be a big crowd there. So nobody's ready to lose a game of football boys, but hopefully, um, hopefully they get it. And look, going by previous games, we're just quickly looking at fixtures previously there. Touch wood and don't jinx it. There's always seems to be goals down there, doesn't there? Like you know, so yeah. I'm sorry for a little now. I know, I know, but you're on red cards, there's always something. So um <clears throat> We'll see what Starry brings, you know. Well, I think the last time we were down, we were up 4 0 at half time and it felt like dreamland to finish 4 2. But it is one of those fixtures where anything can happen. Um, I uh, think we're a little bit, a bit hard done by maybe in the League Cup game. When was that back in September, October? Uh, I felt like we were good in that game. But, you know, it's not like we have, you can't look at the form book this season between the two teams because yeah. at least when we were in the Premiership, we knew what you were like a month beforehand. Whereas this yeah. time it's completely fresh and, you know, we don't get the, we don't be able to watch your games and watch our games. So it's kind of, it's new for the fans. We don't really know what to expect going into it. But hopefully we're coming back down dual carriageway into the next round. That's it. Um, like if, if, if the war point that went to Windsor that day and Drew won all turn up, you know, could have easily won that game and should have won that game. You know, we're, we're sat in, we're compact, but we're very good in the break. Um, it'll obviously not be like that on Saturday, but it's just, it's getting the war point to turn up that has been playing well and not the war point that's you had our mess at times, but I think they've turned the week corner recently, so touch wood, we can turn up and score goals and, I don't know, see, see what these new lads are like, hopefully they can push the squad on a wee bit, you know. I tell you what, this is very civil, this is like three gentlemen talking about football here. I was hoping for a wee bit of, a wee bit of, <laughs> we hooked into the ring. <laughs> Bernie, so just looking at the, the, the team, sort of the team line potential team lineups for um Saturday. We've me and Ali have sort of looked at it and gone, you know, what sort of team do you really put out? You know, do you put out your strongest team? Um, you know, you 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 got a couple of boys injured at the minute, you know, you maybe boys coming on to another yellow card and they get booked and you've a maybe a huge game coming up in a couple of weeks, get away to Ball and Mallard. Um, you know, so it'd be interesting to see what Darren does, whether if anybody's signed this week they'd be eligible in time. We don't know. You know, so we don't know what sort of side Nuri is going to put out. There's fringe players there who maybe haven't got a run, and maybe this is maybe the time to give them a run in terms of the performances haven't been great over the last few weeks. Maybe this is the right game to throw them into. From a point perspective, um, you know, does does Barry obviously even if the two lads, two new lads are available, they'll certainly get mm-hmm. game time. Um, and I think it's a perfect game to bring them into. Um, but in terms of you know, if players are you know maybe on a booking, uh, booking to go for a ban, or that you know they're maybe not performing, do you, do you play them in this game and, and you know, give them the opportunity to go and prove themselves, or do you, do you is he does he play a, a week? And I was going to say a weekend, but a week or side or fringe, bring in more fringe players. Does Stevie McMullen get a game, for example? You know, does Andy Coleman get a game if he's fit? That sort of way, like you know. No, I, I just think he'll go gung ho and he'll be looking the stuffiest back up the road, you know. Um, <laughs> there we go, yeah. Yeah, there yeah, we yeah. go, that's it now. We've <laughs> got him rattled. <laughs> Look, um, yes, Big Connor Mitch has played all the games so far. I think Andy could have played the odd league game or cup game, sorry. Um, possibly maybe take Andy in for that game, possibly, but I can see no big shakes. With a couple of suspensions, I know that much already. Um, Couple of new lads coming in, so I, I, personally, I, I think by nice distraction, get into the cup, get a strong team out, get one over Nuri, get one over Darren Mullen, and send us back up the road for the 
break thumbs up. And... Yeah. It's, getting, it's getting personal, <laughs> personal like. It's not just get one over here, you get one over Darren Mull. Like, oh, what's the one no, Darren no, really like, I'm just thinking, like, buy, buy and Darren, you know what they're like? Managers want to win at all costs. Yeah. I, I, whenever the, whenever, whenever, as soon as the draw came out, um, I remember I can even, I was standing in, in the office and the draw that he popped up on my, on my Twitter and I texted Barry straight away and I says what a shock that draw and he just wrote back he's typical you know what I mean it was just like you know you sort of you, and that's the, that's the good thing about you know, Barry I have a really good relationship with Barry and you know he's done an unbelievable job you know over the years at the point and um, so it'd be great to see him successful and be great to see the point stay up but just you know we'll set that aside for for, for Saturday obviously like you know and I'm being far too polite to you. I know, I know the Irish Cup draw. It caught me on a I was working away. I forgot all about it. And then I came in. I think I seen Marcus Woods attacks then Yuri at home in the cup way. So I tweeted you, Ali, and Paddy McShane. And yeah. Ali came Ali came steaming in with a right hook. <laughs> Paddy, McShane, Paddy McShane kicked me in the ground when it was down. Gareth, you were reserved, you didn't even reply. I'm a professional, I'm a professional, Brandy, you know what I mean? I'm professional. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, a couple of the one pipe ones were saying, oh, Ali McKenzie, boy. I was saying, look, he's big mates with Carl Front. He can't be touching him. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually with Carl the, the day that, that uh, the draw was made. Oh, yeah. Because uh, I was saying I would love to get Crusaders or Linfield, you know, get down the road. But uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's more exciting. But what are you going to do, Brendan, about Jack Gilson here? Because I don't know whose side he's going to be on on Saturday. Jack has been at the showgrounds, I think, more than Milltown this season and always up in the lounge enjoying a few free beers. So, like, I don't know. I've seen you ribbing him on numerous occasions now, so... Uh... so he lives... He lives lives across the road. He frequents right, the yeah. shop. You know what I mean? It's 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 very. I mean, like let's be honest here. He's really he's like a, a Nuri fan and drag sort of thing. Like you know what I mean? He's like, you know he just steps on up the mill town. Like he does a do great job. Do you think if the shit hit the fan and the point would have gone down and Nuri what he would soon just disappear? Would it? Well, uh, far be it for me to say, you know what I mean? That's, that's, a, that's a strong that's a strong accusation to make there, Brendan. Jack, if you want to answer sort of postcard if you're watching. Yeah. Jack's a good lad. He's struggling he as it is with his beloved Newcastle. So I know he likes Warren Point. He puts a lot of hard work into Warren Point. So we'll just let Jack be, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, folks, I think that'll wrap us up for uh this week's episode. Uh like thank Brandy, thanks very much for coming on. Um this will be the last th- last thank you and the last politeness you'll get from me or Ali until well, I was gonna... uh, oh, <laughs> probably not, no. no. I'll say maybe briefly before kickoff and I will depend the result dependent. We'll see whether yeah. you get a cheerio on the way out. You might get a, one of those, like you know. But look, <laughs> I hope it's a good game. Um I mean, because as Ali touched on as you as you touched on earlier, um, you know, it's important that I think this area you know, particularly the South Down area, it probably doesn't get the recognition it deserves. In fact, it happened two clubs from, from four miles apart, you know, a few years ago playing the Premiership at the same time. Hopefully we're playing the Premiership again together next year and we can have these derbies a more regular exactly, occurrence. Yeah. But look, best luck for the rest of the season, apart from Saturday, obviously. Uh, and I wish you'll see you at Milltown. Do well, lads. Thank you. Cheers, Thanks,